Welcome to this episode of the Gastro Guru at Home. I'm going to be making two charcuterie boards and pairing them up with some beautiful Italian bubbly cocktails. Let's get started. So first, let's learn how to open up a bottle of bubbly properly. So this is a great Moscato. So it's got some beautiful sweetness to it and some great bubbles. Now you want to remove the foil like so. Next, you have to open up the cage. So keep one palm over top. Got to make sure this thing doesn't shoot off prematurely. Nobody likes that. So pull off the cage, always keeping your hand over top and then twist from the bottom. If you twist from the neck, you run the risk of having everything explode because you're heating up the liquid and the bubbles and the gas. And so it can pop off the cork. And here we go. We're just going to release a little bit. Don't let it pop off too much because we want to keep that beautiful combustion in the bottle. So we've got the bubbles. So I'm going to be making up a very potent cocktail. This is my sparkling mojito. So in a shaker, half full of ice, I'm going to drop in two lime wedges and three small mint leaves. I'm going to pour in about an ounce and a half of some great rum. You always want to make sure that you're using an aged rum for this cocktail, so it gives you some beautiful flavor and complexity with the sweetness of the Moscato. We're gonna shake it up. And I'm just gonna strain it out into our champagne flute. You can also do this in a champagne coupe, which looks almost like a margarita glass with a bottom dimple. Already, I can smell that beautiful mint and lime, and I'm gonna to top it off with our Moscato. Now, if I was going to be putting ice in this cocktail, I'd want to make sure that uh, I strained everything out because you don't want to have ice in a sparkling cocktail. It'll kill all the bubbles, all the fizz, as well as a whole lot of the flavor of the Prosecco. And when we're dealing with a nice Moscato like this, you just have that nice sweetness that goes great with the complexity of the rum. Oh, that's beautiful. The complexity and the sweetness with the bubbles and fizz. And this is not a cocktail for the weak of heart. Let me tell you, it's all alcohol, but it's great. I'm just going to reserve this over here and move our cocktail stuff over. So I'm going to be doing a secret charcuterie board and then a meat and cheese. So I've got the holy trinity of vegetables, celery, bell peppers, and onions. I'm going to start to saute and I'm going to build a beautiful seafood fondue. So let's drop this into our saucepan and uh, let's get making the fondue. First, you're going to drop in my onions. Next, my celery. Finally, my sweet red peppers. Give it a good stir and let these saute beautifully. Our vegetables are getting nice and soft, and so we're gonna add in our seafood. We've got clams, squid, scallops, shrimp. Everything is in there, we're gonna cook it all up. So we're gonna mix everything together, and we can see that everything is cooking nicely. The flavors and the aromas are terrific. So our seafood fondue is coming together, and we're gonna get our crab and lobster on the grill. So here's a great little tip. I'm gonna open up a beautiful bottle of the Bottega Rose, and I'm gonna pour some of this into our fondue to be able to release all the brownings in the pan to finish it up before we add in our cream cheese to give it that nice, beautiful, creamy texture. Uh, but first, we're gonna build an envelope and put in our king crab legs and lobster claws. I'm gonna pour a little bit of this in so that it gives it some great fragrance. Boom. So, we're gonna be adding in our lobster and king crab claws into an envelope and then throwing it onto the grill. And I'm gonna pour some of the rosé in there to be able to give it some great aromatics. But first, what you always wanna make sure that you're doing is making some slits into the shells. So, firmly crack it open. Now, these guys have already been cooked, so all we're doing is steaming them to give some great flavor. Also, these slits are gonna help it to be able to be broken easier once we put it on the board and we're actually eating them. Nobody likes to be digging into super hard seafood shells. I mean, who doesn't want some beautiful sparkling rosé in on their seafood? So I'm gonna open up our envelope here and place them all in. 
Now you always wanna be careful that we're not piercing the bottom, right? I mean, these guys are sharp, so just wanna be careful of that. And just wanna fold it up. And I'm just gonna put this on the grill on high for about, I don't know, maybe about 10 minutes, maybe, just to get some nice steam. Leave a little bit of an air hole, that way the seafood doesn't get mushy. You can do this with any kind of shellfish, you can do it with clams, you can do it with oysters, you can do it with all kinds of stuff. Just a beautiful way to be able to steam it. So I'm gonna put this on our grill and then I'm gonna add in the rest of our rosé prosecco into the seafood fondue to release the brownies. So you can see the liquid is really starting to come out of the veggies and it's looking great. I'm gonna add in our rosé. It's gonna froth up beautifully. And then next I'm gonna add in our cream cheese. So this is an herbed cream cheese and I'm gonna stir this all in. and get it so it's nice and creamy and well combined. This only takes literally three minutes. So our seafood fondue is totally done. I'm gonna pour it into a very thick oven ready bowl. That way if I want to heat it up afterwards, I definitely can. Look at that. Gorgeous. So I'm gonna remove that because I know this is a crowd pleaser so people are gonna be mowing down. So let's move over our board. So I'm gonna place this down. You always wanna think of a charcuterie board as you're working on a, a beautiful canvas. So let's start painting our picture. So we've got our centerpiece, which is our seafood fondue. You also wanna think about layers and some interesting pairings. So I've got not just any kind of cocktail sauce, but a little bit of beet horseradish and ketchup. Most cocktail sauces are just that horseradish and ketchup. So instead, I've got some beef horseradish and some Montreal steak spice. Gives it a great color and the flavor is out of this world. People, I guarantee you, are gonna wind up going, what is in that? So you wanna think about layers. So I'm gonna add in my white shrimp that I've already boiled. Now when you're doing shrimp, you wanna make sure that you do this ahead of time, even the night ahead, boil them up, Put them in a bowl with a paper towel on the bottom and on the top so it wicks away all the moisture, keeps it nice and firm, looks beautiful. Those guys are great. Next, some Haida candy. So this is a maple glazed salmon. This is a Canadian delicacy and this is awesome. I got this from a beautiful fishmonger at the St. Lawrence Market in Toronto and this flavor is incredible. For people who haven't had it, it's literally like candy. That's what they call it, Haida candy. So you wanna pile it up. Whenever you've got chunks, pile it. Let's see some great layers. Next, we're gonna add in some oysters. Put it all the way through. Nice, these guys are looking great. Okay, cool, so I've got my kosher salt. I'm gonna drop it down and make a nice bed for these six oysters. There we go. So again, you want layers and textures to make it look nice and inviting and easy to grab. Next, we've got our lobster claws and crab claws. So these are nice and steamed up. I'm just gonna pile these over here. I'm gonna put the lobster, the crab over here, lobster over here. I'm gonna figure out which one's my lobster and my crab. <laughs> See, and you can see how brittle the shells are. So it's gonna be so easy to be able to break open and get into that flesh. Throw down the claws. Yummy, nothing better than lobster claws. Oh my goodness. There we go. So, you can throw all that out. Then I've got some seaweed salad, which we're gonna place all around to make it look nice and beautiful. Because you know what guys, does it look good? It gotta make it inviting. So if it doesn't look good, people are gonna think it's not gonna taste good. So I'm just gonna add this on here. And then we've got a couple more items we're gonna add in for the final touch. But first, let's have a little sip. Mm. I'm gonna move this over and we're gonna start working on our meat and cheese board. Mm -hmm. 
So before we start making up our charcuterie board, I'm gonna make up a fresh 75, which is beautiful. So we're gonna start off with all chilled ingredients. I've got some fresh lemons. We're gonna make some lemon juice here. You only need about a quarter of an ounce for this. Now the traditional recipe is lemon juice, sugar, and Prosecco with some gin. So I'm actually gonna be adding in some hibiscus extract instead of sugar. This is gonna give some sweetness. And then we're gonna add in this great chilled Bottega beautiful gin. This is a gin from Italy. And it just got some great fragrance to it, nice and fresh and dry. And then of course, some beautiful Prosecco. So if you think about this, we're gonna have nice soft, but some good acidity in there, some sweetness, some herbaceous tones from the gin. And then we've got the sweetness from the hibiscus. This is gonna work great with the creamy tones of the cheeses and the fatty smokiness of the meats. And of course, with all the fruit. Cheers. Perfect. So now I'm sure none of you need to see me cut up meats or place them down. So I'm gonna do this super, super fast and then get into all the tips and tricks. So we have these amazing boards. We've got our seafood, we've got our meat and cheese. Let's go through what I was actually doing and fast forward. So we've got some beautiful mortadella, some quince pate, which is this beautiful apple and pear fruit. I've got some copa, which is a beef uh, prosciutto. Then we've got some umberco, chorizo. So beautiful, beautiful heat on there. Uh, some picorino with truffles. I've got a beamster that's cave aged. And then I've got a beautiful French ham that has really low sodium, so it's just got great flavor. Beautiful French cheese. This is actually pressed with the, uh, the wild flowers that the cows are milked by, so it brings out this great aroma. I'm telling you, I know it sounds like craziness, but once you taste it, it's amazing. Hungarian salami with some peppercorns on the outside, dolce gorgonzola, some more copa, a uh, manchego with uh, honey and hay, calabrese salami, which is nice and spicy, I like it a heat, and then some beautiful prosciutto. I also have some uh, chevra, which tastes amazing with beautiful ash on the side, so it gives it like almost like a, a tea herbaceous flavor. Again, some skewered pickles. Next, we've got some oysters, high to candy, king crab legs, beautiful vodka cured smoked salmon, lobster claws, or shrimp, Beautiful seafood fondue, and I've got an amazing cream cheese with fresh pressed wildflowers. Top three tips in making a board, make sure that you've got layers. Make it easy for people to see things and pick things up. I was using microgreens to be able to actually elevate um, so that people can actually pick things out. We've got three different types of grapes and beautiful Rainier Gourmet cherries. I've got Moscato, red, and green. Second, give it some space. Everybody's gonna wanna touch your artwork, but they won't unless there's a little bit of space to be able to grab. Third thing is put like-minded pairings together. So make it easy for people to be able to put deliciousness together. And fourth, always have a beautiful cocktail in hand, especially with some amazing Prosecco. Cheers, everybody. Until next time, be happy, stay safe, keep cooking. See you soon.